So welcome to Everyday Passions, Heart-Centered Conversations. Each week, it's my delight to introduce you to a special guest who shares his or her passion in business. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Michael Fiber. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. I look forward to, um, you know, getting to know you and, uh, and the same. Excellent. And I'll just share with you something about Michael. And first of all, before I go any further, I want to welcome our guests who will be watching or listening to the replay. Or if you're watching live, thank you for being here with us. And to tell you a little bit about Michael, he's a professional visualist, and he's going to explain that a little better in our discussion. He's a results-oriented and highly self-motivated individual with over 15 years of experience and an eye for design and development. Michael prides himself on delivering a positive return on investment for each and every client. And is that what we want? And his company, DevilDogMarketplace.com, is committed to maintaining a standard of excellence. So Michael, uh, I've shared something about your business side. Would you please share with us, let us get to know you better by sharing something on the personal side. Yes, well, you know, Devil Dog Marketplace was built on the foundation of my service to this country. I'm a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. And, you know, everything that I do within my business it comes from the training that I received as being a veteran in combination of the, you know, the, you know, 15 years of digital marketing experience. So I've combined the two and I make it easy for, for businesses, small to large, um, find their visual image. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you say find their visual image, is that what you also mean by your being a professional visualist. Speak to us a little bit about that, please, and expand on that so we understand in the context of what you do, what that means. You know, there's, very, there's a lot of designers out there. There's many people that can use Photoshop, they can use Illustrator. You know, I try to help my clients find their visual. Now, there are people that go to other countries to get work done. They go to big box stores. But I work with my clients on a one-to-one -one basis where I'm finding out what their brand is. If someone comes to me and says, I'm looking for a tree with a rainforest, design it for me. You know, that's not a good fit. That's not what a visualist does. A visualist takes your idea, your vision. Now, most people are left brain thinker, thinking. You know, they know how to speak what they want. They have an idea what they want, but they're not sure how to communicate it in a visual way. And what I do is I help them find that visual by tapping into the right side of the brain, the creative side. So I take them through my process, which is very easy. Within, within 20 minutes, I can find what their form, their function, their color, and what their brand is. So when I go to design, it's 85% them and only 15% me. How can anyone not like the work when they've designed it? That's a visualist. I love that because really what it sounds like you're doing is like you're kind of like the, 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 the source through which they, they have it inside, but they don't know how to convey it. But by going through your process, they're now able to explain it so that you can bring it to life for them. Does that make sense? Is that what you exactly. do? Exactly. You know, a lot of people love food shows. Now, you don't have to be a cook to understand how to make a, a good recipe. But sometimes, and following a recipe book doesn't provide enough information for you to create a, a great meal. So as a, as a person who teaches the recipe of, of the visual world, 
I help them put together that recipe so at the end it all tastes good. Mmm, love that analogy. Beautiful. And at this point, I just want to kind of like do a little pattern interrupt here to point out that you and I met on a virtual networking event, Michael, and I want to share that because I really want to encourage our listeners and our viewers that especially if you're like me, where I haven't started going back to offline events, there are still a number of networking events, virtual networking events that we can attend. And the benefits are tremendous because like Michael and I, we're collaborating on, on, on my show. Later on, I may do something with Michael. So it may not always be finding a client or a customer but you can find a referral partner or someone to collaborate with. So there is value in engaging in virtual networking events. What would you say to that, Michael? Because I know this is something you have been doing for a number of years. Yes. You know, I believe that, that when you either meet in person or we do it virtually, it's really about building a relationship. A per mm -hmm. Anyone feels pressure when someone is pushing their product. I get on a virtual Zoom call with a group of people. I'm not there to push my wares. I am there to build relationships so we can get to know each other and how we can find that collaboration. You know, for example, you know, you're a, gr a great interviewer. You have a, a live show. And I know people that would like the same opportunity. So I can introduce people to you that would help grow your show. Now, I'm not making any money on that, but I'm adding value. And people remember the value that you add. And so that separates you from those pushy salesmen. Because I'm not in it to win it. I'm in it to, to, to make a difference in people's lives. Beautifully said. That is so, and we go with the same attitude when we're at live networking events. We don't go around, or that shouldn't be our goal to just go around and pass out our cards and then they end up in the garbage bin. We should go with an attitude that we're going to give. And the law of reciprocity, it comes back to us eventually. But we want to give. And so I admire that. And that is what I found with you along with the other, many of the other individuals who are in this particular networking event. So Michael, tell, tell me, you have, you have your life in, the, in um, your vet, um, and you had your, your military career. So at what point did you discover that the, the, helping people to take what's in their brain and bring that out, that this was a passion for you? along with the other things that you do in your devil dog marketing marketplace. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a mouthful. <laughs> you know, we all, we all have our gifts, but sometimes we're not sure what it is. We're not sure how to get there. And when I, mm -hmm. when I, I've learned so many things from being in the Marine Corps, but I had to learn how to transition into being a civilian. Now, Everyone is different. Some people are very analytical and some people are not. And I found out that, you know, I have, I have a creative spirit. I was trying to fit into the analytical world. Now I was, I was good at it, but that wasn't my gift. My gift is to, to utilize the visuals in words and the visuals in design. Once I, I identified that and I actually ran into it by mistake. I was sitting in a math class. Now we know that some people are really good at math and some people struggle. I didn't struggle, but it wasn't fun. And um, this math teacher, he was a statistics teacher. He goes, I'm gonna teach one side of the class one way and I wanna teach the other side of the class the other. Who here are lefties? And I raised my hand. All the lefties go on one side of the class. All the righties go on the other. Now we only make up like 2% of the population, but he taught the class 
for, for, for my brain. And do you know that I got an A in a class and it was fun. Then I realized at that moment that I'm a right brain thinker. I'm trying to force myself to force that muscle, that left brain muscle. And it was a lot of work and it was exhausting. Mm -hmm. Once I figured out my gift, I was able to develop it and help others to do the same. That's amazing because it sounds like you were the, the proverbial, you were a square peg trying to fit into a round hole or vice versa, whatever it is. Yeah, some people so, do well. Different. Yeah, some people do well within a box. I was mm-hmm. always outside the box. I would love to paint outside the lines and the teachers try to put me back in the box. No, I want to color mm-hmm. out here and that's okay. That was my, that was who I am. That was my language. And, you know, and I do better when you allow me to speak the language that I was birthed with. That is awesome. I wish, you know, more people, because who knows, just like how you felt constricted within that box, the same way other people who have been raised to believe that they have to behave a certain way or they have to go on a certain path. And we see this especially now that people are beginning to reject the, the structural way of life. You know, we're led to believe, okay, you go to school, you go to college, and then you pursue a certain career. And forget about all those fancy dreams you have, all those things that are not going to make you money right away. You, you're you supposed to go this path. And then suddenly at some point in their lives, they recognize they can no longer stay in that box. That mold is not for them. And especially now, following COVID, so many people are desirous of branching out and spreading their wings in a different direction. Exactly, exactly. So what would you say to those people? What would you say to those people who feel constrained by where they are, what what they have been doing? And they know that there's something deep inside that they really want more of. What would you say to them? I I would say to them, it's okay to be different. Doesn't make it wrong. Doesn't make it right. Um, You know, some people do learn better standing up. Right? So I give people permission and I can give yourself permission to learn the way that you do. I'm a visual learner. I can sit and read a book. But if you want me to be successful in what I do, I watch video, I hear audios, people learn differently. And I say, be your incredible self. Don't let anybody change who you were meant to be. If you're a creator, express your creativity. And there's there's nothing wrong with it, you know? And focus on what you can do right instead of what you can do wrong, what people tell you you're doing wrong. I always say to someone, whether I'm in a relationship or I'm getting to know them, if you focus in on the 80% that's good in yourself, people will ignore the 20. Mm -hmm. That may not be perfect. Yes. No, it won't be perfect, but that's sound advice. Thank you. I like that. Focus on what you do right. So having attended attended network um, subsequent networking events since the first time that I connected with you, I hear people give you great testimonials. So tell me, Michael, what are some ways that this wonderful passion of yours, you have been able to use this to impact the lives of other people? And you spoke at the beginning about small business businesses in general but small businesses seem to be where you have that little passion for helping them to grow. So how have you, how would you say you've been able to impact them? Well, I had the privilege to learn something recently about myself and I recommend you can contact me about it. It's called the bank, the bank, bank method. And it's a code breaker. We all have our own code. I happen to be a nurturer. I happen to be action oriented, a blueprint person and knowledgeable. Those, that is my code. 
And it's great if you can identify who you are and communicate. If I'm talking to you or who's a blueprint person, you like things within a box, you like processes. If I talk to you like a nurturer, we're not going to speak the same language. So mm -hmm. if you want to find out more about bank, I'd be happy to share with you. It, it, it enhanced my life. Even though I was doing this you know, anyway because of the gift of discernment, it now it provides the scientific method to be able to understand yourself and speak in that person's code. And so I think what happens when people meet with me, they feel like I'm connecting. And I think that is the first step. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because in order to build a relationship, you must make a connection. Once the awareness part is done, you're aware of each other, then you need to be able to connect. Um, and connect is more than just saying hello. It's more connecting with understanding so that you're able to speak to them in the language that they respond to. And I'm fairly familiar with Bank because um, one of my partners actually is someone who promotes Bank and I have not used it personally. It's a lot less complex than DISC, which I'm pretty familiar with. But, and I think it gives you an opportunity to understand someone quickly. And that is essential, and that's just what you shared. So, of course, that's something that if anyone who is listening would like to reach out to Michael about, then by all means, feel free to do so, because I'm going to be putting the website and Michael's telephone number, all his information. But when he gets his website, the telephone number is there. So is there any last minute point you'd like to share, Michael, that uh, can inspire people. You have shared a couple of inspirational ones as well, but is there anything last minute you'd like to share? From a business point of view, if you have an idea, but you're not sure where to begin, you know, reach out to me. There's no cost to have a conversation and I'll be happy to help you transition to becoming the, the entrepreneur you were meant to be. Excellent. So, Michael, thank you so very much for being here with me today. I enjoyed our conversation, and I, I'm sure our listeners did as well. And as I said, I'm going to be placing your information, available, making it available to them so that they can reach out to you if they desire to do so. So thank you again, and you have a wonderful rest of your day. And to our listeners and viewers, Thank you for being here with us. If you're watching the replay, just go ahead and put hashtag replay. And that will allow us to know that you really listen. You listen and you visited with us and spent your time with us. So have a wonderful rest of your day.